Hello, Kai here from Family Wheels with another car review for your growing family. And coming up on this episode. <laughs> ah, God, I love it. The 2019 Volkswagen Golf GTI Rabbit. Is this the car that could make you forget about compact SUVs and crossovers and get you back into a hot hatch? We're going to run it through the famous Family Wheel standardized test to help you make that decision. And there's two words that come into play here. There's a big F word and a small C word. It's the 2019 Volkswagen Golf GTI Rabbit this week on Family Wheels. Fun. The F word is fun. This car is so much fun. I've absolutely loved driving this car this week. It makes you think, you know what, sweetheart? We don't need an SUV or a crossover. This does everything you need it to, and it is so much more fun. It'll make you think, we don't have to have a boring car. We can have a car that I love driving and totally fits all the family's needs. That C word is compromise. You're gonna have to compromise just a little bit, but I think that the fun factor far outweighs and overshadows that compromise that you'll be totally happy with the Volkswagen Golf GTI Rabbit. Or in fact, there's not many cars that I would actually say that the base trim is adequate. Often they don't put enough in it and they're just, I think that they're just searching for a low price so they leave a lot out. But the base of the GTI is actually $30,000 in Canada and just over 27 in the States. And you would be hard pressed to find a car that is more fun and still has all the function than the Volkswagen Golf GTI. This one, the Rabbit, so the Golf first came out in 1974 and the Rabbit badge has popped up from time to time as a bit of a throwback to its heritage. This year they did a limited run in 2019. So this starts at about $33,000 in Canada and in the States, that's about $28,000. and the couple of things that it has on it, it's got a different spoiler at the back, it's got some black gloss mirrors, it's got some piping on the floor mats, whatever, and it's got some rabbit badging on the stitching on the seats. It actually has a really nice Fender sound system, which is awesome. And this one I'm driving has an added extra, which is the driver assist feature which has got like your blind spot warning, your cross traffic warning, your crash mitigation, that type of thing. That was a $1,750 option and it's actually quite useful. I'd recommend getting something like that. But the fun factor is in the engine and the drivability of the Volkswagen Golf GTI. This has a two liter turbocharged engine putting out 228 horsepower and it is a lot of fun. That is plenty of power for a car this size and this weight. You can turn it from just being a little runabout to go get your groceries into a little rocket ship in the press of a button or just by slamming your foot to the ground. It's a lot of fun. Two options with the transmission. You've got a six-speed manual or you've got this one that's in this car. This is the seven-speed automatic with the sport shift as well. We've got paddles or you can slide the gear shift over and you can use the gears that way. It's also, if you just pull back really quickly, it pops it into sport mode really quickly. So you can go from drive, bang it back into sport and take off like a rocket if you like. Going back to the compromise, what are you not getting in here that you're going to have to compromise on? So the base model and this one, the Rabbit, doesn't have a couple of things. It doesn't have a sunroof. It doesn't have a heated steering wheel. It doesn't have electric movability on either of the seats. It's got a little bit on the driver's seat, but it doesn't have like the memory settings attached to your key fob. It doesn't have that. It doesn't have a digital dash. It's actually quite plain, but you know what? All those things are completely overshadowed by how much fun it is. If that compromise is just a little bit too much for you, then you don't have to if you don't want to. The top trim level on the Golf GTI is 36,000 in both the States and in Canada, and that's got a few other nice things. It's got leather seats, it's got a sunroof, so you don't have to not have those things if you don't want to. So I can convince you all I like, I can give you the facts and figures and tell you how much fun it is and still how capable and functional it is, but when you're buying yourself a new family car, it's the opinion of other people that count as well. So with that, what does my wife think? Two things you might like about this car, if anything. I like the size of the car. It's, it's compact enough uh, to get around easier than some of the bigger vehicles. I like the space inside the car. Even though it's small, it still seems spacious. But I don't like how close I feel to the ground. It's too low for me. Has it got enough space for a family? It surprises me that I think it does. Do you like how fast it is? <laughs> That's not what I ever like about any vehicle. 
having all that fun, you're not having to compromise too much on fuel economy either. So combined, you're getting 28 miles to the gallon, or it's about 8.5 liters per 100 kilometers. In our testing, I've done purely city driving this week, and I've done 11.6 liters per hundred uh, but that is by me putting my foot to the floor in every single occasion that i possibly can in fact the most frustrating part of this car is sitting in traffic <laughs> it's like get out the way don't you know i'm driving a little rocket ship here i want to be up there move back to a compromise this is just a front wheel drive on the gti and i must say that with 228 horsepower and driving around town uh, this week it's been a little bit damp you will feel a bit of understeer there's been some torque steer on occasions and also it's lacked some traction sometimes getting away from a standing start if i've really plowed my foot into it but if you don't want to compromise on that you can upgrade to the golf r so that sits above the gti forty two thousand dollars in canada 40 grand in the states and that is an absolute absolute rocket ship with 288 horsepower and it's all wheel drive. What about space? Do you compromise space on the Volkswagen Golf GTI? Not really. So in our famous standardized tests of the kids rear facing seat, I use the world's chunkiest kids seat on purpose. It's the Kleck Flow and in a rear facing position, the passenger seat still had a bunch of room. I'm six foot tall. My knees were not against the glove compartment and that is largely due to the fact that Volkswagen is so good at designing their interiors they utilize every last little millimeter of space they possibly can in their interiors, so that wasn't too bad. Also, the anchors were a little bit weird, actually. So the anchor points were easy to find, but you have to pull off this cover, and then the anchor points, the tabs are right there, but then you've got to put this little plastic piece somewhere and store it and hope you don't lose it. That was odd. I've actually never seen that before. Our other standardized test is the trunk test. So on paper, it says that you should get just over 600 liters of cargo space, and I want to say that that is without that parcel shelf in, with our standardized test of the stroller, two shopping bags, a diaper bag, the camera bag, and a soccer ball, it fits, it passes the test, it's a bit tight, but that was also with the parcel shelf on. Over 600 liters is actually pretty decent cargo space, so I'm gonna say that if you take out that parcel shelf, it shouldn't be a problem at all. So it's sounding pretty good so far, hey? It is a fun car to drive, it's a little rocket ship, but you're not compromising too much on passenger comfort or on space. Even without the kid's seat in the back, it is pretty comfortable for an adult to sit back there and go on a nice journey. Let's take a look at the rest of the interior on the Volkswagen Golf GTI. It's a comfortable car. These seats are uh, quite racy. They do sit quite close under my shoulders here. So if you're a really large person, you might find that they're digging in just a little bit. I'm pretty slender, but I mean, for me, it's perfect. Driving this car aggressively, you feel really supported by the seating. They are the Clark cloth trim, which is a throwback to the Golf heritage. And I must say that it's quite coarse, this cloth. So if you've got kids like mine who like to throw food everywhere and can't have a, a car ride without some food, I'm wondering if there might be some crumbs that end up in the cloth interior here. It might be a bit more difficult to get out. So if you want leather, you might have to go up to the top trim level, which is the Autobahn. The rest of the interior here is quite uncluttered. In terms of compromise, that word again, you only get one USB outlet down here and you get one power 12 volt outlet down here. It's got an old school handbrake. You don't have the push button. Maybe that's compromise, maybe it's not. If you want to have a lot of fun, you probably actually want a handbrake. The infotainment system on the Volkswagen Golf is one that's been rolled out in other cars as well, and it really is good. It does the job, it's quite responsive. The backup camera, the quality of the camera is exceptional. You've got Apple CarPlay and you've got Android Auto as standard. The Fender sound system. Is awesome. Climate control is all controlled by the tactile buttons here. It does double up on the screen up here, which does have motion sensors to it. So it recognizes when your hand's about to pop up and touch something if you've got the climate control on there. The dash, I mentioned earlier, that's something you might have to compromise on. It is just the standard analog old school dials. In the middle, you've got a little bit of information. You've got as much as you really need. It does have parking assist as well, which I was surprised by. They've left out a bunch of other things, but you've got parking assist on a smaller car, not always required, but some people just hate parallel parking. So it's got parking assist if you need it. Another compromise for you maybe on space inside is things like the center console. This center console is tiny. You've got a little tray down here as well, but to compensate for that, they've given you much more space in the door trim. There's some bigger tubs there. Small compromise, but if you're the one driving having some fun who cares you can also if you want to have so much more fun you can turn off traction go for it push yourself <laughs> 
Do I need to do a driving test? Do I need to tell you how this car drives? It's awesome. The one downfall I will say on the GTI, just being that front wheel drive, if you're someone who really likes to drive aggressively, um, you are gonna notice a little bit of understeer at times. You're gonna notice a little loss of traction and maybe a bit of torque steer as well. I've noticed that on occasions, but the rest of it in terms of your driving modes, if you're not an aggressive driver and you just want a super cool car to drive around and you've got it, your driving modes are accessed down here on your console near the start button. You've got eco, comfort and normal. That's a lot of options to have sort of on the bottom end. Usually you could probably lose one of those and then you've got sport which I left it in most of the time and then you've got custom you can set up the car however you like one thing I love about the driving modes and how quick it is to get into sport mode in this car say you've got it on normal or something but you're at a t-junction you need to bust some gap you need some more power you can just pop the gear shift back like this and it'll put it into sport straight away and you can take off I'll show you how quick this car is and how fun it is to go off the line so I'm in sport on here sport in the shift I'm going to use the paddles and we'll just go <laughs> ah god i love it i've never got sick of that this week and 30 grand 30 grand and it's still functional as a family car but what about the kids did they like it in the standardized kids pep test three two one bless off So there you have it, the 2019 Golf GTI. It's a wonderful car. Hopefully you found this review useful. If so, give it a like, leave us a comment, and subscribe to Family Wheels so you can catch all of our reviews as soon as they come out every single week. Until then, from Family Wheels, I'm Kai.